Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming. I'd like to talk to you today about how we're getting ready for the circular economy at KP. So I'll start off talking a little bit about who we are, what we do, um, then digging into how we are getting ready for the circular economy, how that's reflected in our product range, then talk, take a little while to talk about our trade-to-trade program, which is really at the heart of our circular ambitions, leading into the opportunities and challenges before handing over to, to the expert panel to, to dig into the question and answers and the debate. So KP is uh, divided into two divisions. Um, we have 31 plants across, across the world, 18 countries. We were founded in Germany in 1965, entered the North American market in 1970 before being acquired by investors, a group of investors led by SVP in 2012. And I think it's important to think about scale um, when we talk about sustainability because we can't do it on our own. We need to collaborate and being of a scale in the market helps, helps us to drive those collaborations and engage with partners around the world. At KP, our vision is the sustainable protection of everyday needs. And it's more than just a vision. It's something that is embedded in everything we do, every project we start, every decision we take. It allows us to deliver traceability, transparency and value through the, the entire chain. It allows us to engage in responsibly in significant collaborations across the globe, particularly on sustainability. And as you'll see later, it's at the heart of all of our innovation. Every innovation we project, project we begin um, has a significant sustainability assessment. And um, you'll see from the products that we've got on the booth, uh, sustainability is at the heart of, of our innovation program. And that leads us to closing the loop. Closing the loop is all about using less virgin material, being less dependent on virgin raw materials. Uh, and we do that through using more and more post-consumer recycled material. That helps us to encourage consumers to recycle. It helps us to encourage local authorities, waste management companies to collect the material by our role in creating a demand for that material. And perhaps mo most importantly, it's about designing and developing our materials to make them as suitable for recycling as they possibly can be, uh, whilst at the same time complying with uh, all the regulations required within our markets. So our sustainability programme at KP really comprises of, of three pillars. The first is recycled content, and our ambition here is to make sure that 30% of, of the material we use is from post-consumer sources by 2025. And that's on the, the global basis for KP across both our food and uh, pharma and healthcare and durables divisions. Uh, and when you think about some of our product lines within the food business, we're already doing a, a great job in getting there. We've got products already that contain 100% recycled material. The second pillar is all about recyclability. So making sure our products are as recyclable as they can possibly be. Uh, and that can be removing multi-layer structures from our products, simplifying the structures onto a, a single, uh, single material type, making it easier for our recycling partners to sort and process those materials. And the final column is, is all about closing the loop. And this is where we want to talk about our trade-to-trade programme. Uh, and our trade-to-trade programme, I'll come onto it in a bit more detail later, but it's, it's all about replacing the recycled content that we're currently sourcing from post-consumer bottles with post-consumer content from trays. And our goal here is to replace 30% of our recycled material currently coming from bottles with material coming from trays by 2025. And we're well on the way, but we need some help to, to finish that program and take it to, to completion. We have some product lines already at 30%, but we need to do a bit more and we need your help. So as a food division, we operate across a number of market sectors. Um, food to go, fruit and produce, protein, particularly fresh and processed uh, meat, uh, and the bakery sector. And when we consider our product lines, um, we design all of these products with sustainability in mind. But it's important to consider that sustainability means different things to, to different customers and to different consumers. Um, and 
we're showing an overview here of the um, various ranges of products and, and how they measure from a sustainability perspective, either from recycled content, recyclability, or resource efficiency. And you'll see some, some products were able to target all three of those measures with, with a single product, but in other cases it's more difficult. Um, we, we try and provide options where the, the consumer or the customer can make a choice between uh, which sustainability attribute meets their goals best. Uh, and, and that's the, the, the progress we're, we're, we're taking. So I'd like to dig into to three particular products now and look, look at them in a bit more detail. So firstly is KP Zipporah. One of the challenges in the meat processing sector is the, the management of drip loss, meat juices uh, through the supply chain, traditionally handled by uh, a soaker pad applied into the bottom of the tray. Um, these, whilst they perform very well, are a disaster from a recycling perspective. They've, they are effectively a contaminant in the recycling stream. So, so to help our products be more effectively recycled, we embarked on an innovation project to, to replace those pads with uh, features in the tray that manage that drip loss and moisture through the, the product life cycle. And we call that KP Zipporah. So it results in a fully recyclable padless tray. It can be um, manufactured from up to 100% post-consumer material, and we're slowly re replacing that post-consumer bottled material with post-consumer tray-to-tray flake. It's an innovative design that's the, the result of uh, collaboration between a number of organizations, and it really is best in class. We've benchmarked this, this product against its competitive set, and it continues to perform better than the rest, and we're really proud of it. And it's going to help our customers deliver products that are more and more recyclable. The next product I'd like to talk about is FlexiLid EH145R. This is a fully recyclable barrier lidding film, and you'll start to see a theme coming through here. This, this lidding film can be combined with our, our elite trays to provide a, provide a fully recyclable case-ready solution. So our customers in the case-ready protein sector, they want a fully recyclable solution, they take the FlexiLid EH145R, they take our elite tray, and we, we're well on the way to having a fully recyclable pack for them. And recyclability for flexibles, I'm sure we'll hear a bit later, is challenging. And um, we've, so we've been working with external organisations to validate the recyclability performance, organisations such as Intercero, following the CFLEX guidelines, uh, whilst maintaining those important attributes within this lidding film that are required to, to deliver the, the shelf life and make sure we don't increase food waste, so that would be high barrier excellent seal characteristics, etc., whilst at the same time performing well through our customers' sealing lines. And the third product I'd like to talk about is, is KP Mono Seal. This is one of our rigid films, uh, and it's a good example of how the functionality of a product is, becomes much more challenging as you design it for recycling. In this case, we're, we're looking at a what would have been a, a PETPE multi-layer material designed for sealing through contamination, sealing quickly. As soon as you remove that PE sealing layer and make a, a, a mono material, the performance becomes compromised. And that's where mono seal comes in. We've developed it to be recyclable as a mono PET film, but still retain the sealing performance of a multi-layer performance. And again, third-party certification, endorsed, endorsed by the Trace Circularity Evaluation Program, using the pet core um, recyclability evaluation. And we can also bolt on technologies such as PCR content, tray to tray content within MonoSeal. Uh, and it allows operational improvement for our customers. So we're giving them sustainability benefits, but also providing operational benefits. I've mentioned a couple of times our tray to tray program. And this is all about bringing trays full circle. So We've got a strong history in recycled content, mostly coming from the bottle sector, and, and our goal now is to start increasingly driving the recyclability of trays and including tray flake within our formulations. And that really starts to demonstrate the circularity of our products. So tray to tray is generally available across our PET tray and rigid film portfolios. Uh, again, we're working with third parties to provide the traceability and certification uh, through our manufacturing sites. So they'll be Reciclass certified to, to the amount of tray to tray content that's within those products. These products are fully circular, so they are made from recycled content, but they're perfectly designed for recycling at end of life. And at the same time, they maintain the food maximum food protection to reduce and eliminate food waste. 
So the trade to trade pro process looks something like this. We engage with partners to, to start identifying the, the tray flake, in some cases separating it from bottle streams, putting it through a, a hot washing process, sorting it, and supplying it to KP as a hot washed flake. At KP, we then um, extrude it into a rigid film, either supply it as a rigid film or, then, or further thermoform it into a, a preformed tray. That product, um, in this particular case, I'm talking about our, our eternal range coming out of our, our Spanish site in Pravia, would contain just over 90% recycled content. Of that recycled content, around 30% of it is now coming from trays. So that's a great step forward um, and really starting to demonstrate the circularity of our, our PET tray offer. And less than 10% of that product is, is now virgin PET. So it's a real success story. Those trays are then supplied to our customers, the food processors, packed with product, sent to the retailers, used by the consumers. Consumers recycle them at end of life, and the whole process starts again. It's a, it's a great story. It's uh, challenging. It's not, not quite as easy as the diagrams make it look, but we are doing it. We're walking the walk here. Our target is to replace 30% of the RPET that we use from bottles with RPET from trays by 2025. It's an amb a very ambitious target, but we're making great progress towards it. But we need to go further. So far, this 500,000 tonnes of tray waste is wasted each year. Our tray to tray programme has the potential to bring back 50,000 tonnes of that recycled PET back into the supply chains. But we need collaboration. We need to go further, we need to go faster, and we need your help to do that. So, thank you very much for your attention. I'll hand back to, to Tim for the panel discussion.